Welcome dear followers to my channel. My name is Marlies and today we're going to create this top and smaller layer for my explosion box. On this left and right flap we will create two mini books. I found this beautiful backdrop from Tim Holtz and I am cutting a front cover and a back cover for my booklet. Besides that I'm also cutting some strips of black cardstock and some little black squares. I will cut the black strips exactly at the height of the books and what we have in total is four strips, longer strips and four little squares. The longer strips will be glued down on the side, on one side of the cover and also the back cover. The little squares are cut in a diagonal line and those little triangles will be glued on the corners of the covers. And this is how one of the covers will look like. This is the inside and this is the outside of the cover. All the edges of this cover are too neat to my liking. So I got out my paper distressor and I will roughen up all edges. With the Distress Ink Vintage Photo I will age my papers, so I got out my blending tool and I will rub the ink along all sides. In my hands I have the Ephemera Pack Snippets Curator and I think these little uh, labels are perfect for the cover of the mini books. It is like a label or a title that goes on. I also want these little pieces to be roughened up, so here comes in the paper distressor again. But I also want this paper to be like worn, so I'm going to crumple the paper up in between my fingers. For an all over and same look, I got out my vintage photo ink again and I will ink up those little pieces of paper too. With my Distress Collage Medium Matte I will glue those uh, labels down, but not in total and very flat. I want it to look uh, worn and used. And here is a close-up of the two books, but when you see on the left book the label, it is empty. I would like to stamp with my Field Notes stamp set. I got a row of numbers and I'm only inking up the top uh, number, so I can only use that one. With this tea dyed paper I will make an accordion folded uh, inside little pages for the mini books. I will tear two strips of paper out of this A4 size paper. Then I will lay it on the inside of the cover, so I have my measurements for folding. Now tear off the excess piece and what we will have right now, I have um, put on the front and the back cover, is this little accordion booklet. I want the inside pages to be stained and to be old, so I will distress them with my Distress Ink Vintage Photo.
with this stamp set, Slate and Stone from Tim Holtz, I would like to create some extra interest in the background of my papers. So I will stamp uh, first with the Slate stamp, and I'm going to do that partially. So I'm inking up just small parts of the stamp, and I will make an irregular pattern. Make sure to stamp both sides of the paper. Now I will stamp with the stone stamp, and I'm going to do that in the same manner as I did with the slate one. So I'm inking up just the stamp partially, and I'm going to make an irregular pattern in between the pattern that is already there. With the Distress Oxide Ink Black Suit, I will create some darker edges, because overall this is a Halloween project, so you can go a little bit darker. I will use the Distress Collage Medium to glue down uh, the pages to the covers, so I will give a nice and even layer of glue on one side, and I will put it down on the inside of my front cover. Then fold all the pages in, and on the last uh, page you will put an even layer of glue too, so you can put down the back cover. Put the booklets to the side to dry, and then I will focus on something uh, on top of the booklets. So I cut out this square 2x2 two two inch, and I will fold it uh, diagonally, and I will pinch in the middle. So you will have a mark in the middle. Then uh, fold up the other side, also diagonally, and pinch also. Now you will have a cross in the middle for reference. Put the square piece of paper in front of you and pick up the bottom uh, point, the bottom corner, and fold it up. Then turn your paper and do the same on the other side. Can you already see what I'm creating? It will be a cute little envelope. So now I will pick up the bottom flap and I will fold it up to the top line. You can see that those flaps still have quite a sharp corner on it. If you do not like it, cut it away. The top flap also has quite a sharp corner, I do not like that, so I'm going to use my corner punch and round it up. What you can also see is that the paper is still quite white, so I'm going to uh, go in there with my Distress Ink Vintage Photo and create an older look. With my Distress Collage Medium, I will close down the envelope, so I will put some glue on the side flaps towards the bottom. But when I fold up the bottom flap, I thought, well, maybe I will put some extra glue in those corners to hold it up. For the inside of the envelope, I will cut this curator snippet into two halves. I will also add a piece of book page, an old book, yellowed pages. And I'm going to make it layered, so you will see different kind of papers on top of each other. And that will look like this. To make the papers look a little bit more worn, I will crumple up those edges uh, in between my fingers, do a little bit of tearing and folding. And for those uh, curator uh, snippets, I will use my paper distressor to roughen up all edges. After the roughening part, I will also add a layer of brownish ink on the sides. I want those little papers to be glued together, so they will definitely stay in place while they are in the envelope. And also because later on I will glue them on top of the mini books. Because what you do not want is that those pieces of paper will fall off while you are opening the explosion box. Here is a close-up of the envelopes, but you can see quite some clear area on top of the envelopes. I found these two pieces of round ephemera to decorate the top of the envelopes. First of all, I will give those pieces of ephemera a layer of brownish ink. Then 
This label will be used as an extra layer on the inside of the envelope, so first I will cut it into two halves. And then I will give them a rub of ink. I will glue the piece of label on the back of the layers that we already created, the curator snippet and the book page. I got out my Field Notes stamp set from Tim Holtz and I found this little figure one and figure two stamp. Figure one can go on top of one label, so you only have to ink it up partially. Then wipe your stamp clean and ink up the bottom part, figure two, for the second label. I will glue the envelopes down on top of those mini books that we created and I will do that in an angle because that is a little bit more playful as an end result. Thread. A piece of thread uh, around the book will add some little cute detail so I will wrap it around, tie it off in a knot and make a little bow. I found some black velcro in my stash, so this part of the velcro will go on the back of our mini books. On top of that will go the other, the second piece of velcro. The two pieces of velcro are on and we are looking at the sticky side and I'm going to place it in my smaller layer for the explosion box. And yeah, everything will be in place right away. The fun thing about using the Velcro is that you can get your mini books out and write on those mini pages inside. There are still two more flaps of the explosion box to uh, embellish. So I found some pieces of ephemera, the eyes, uh, some leftover pieces out of my paper frames and the flashcards ghostly wicked. With my paper distresser, I will grunge up and uh, roughen up all the edges of my paper as a first step. The second step is to rub some brownish ink on all the edges and I'm doing that with the Distress Ink Vintage Photo. With the same ink pad, I would like to create some staining on top of my papers. So I will put some of the ink on my craft sheet, wet it down, break up the color with my fingers, and I will dab all the pieces of paper into those little ink drops. On to the gluing part. I will start with the longer strip that I have cut into two pieces uh, that is exactly the width of those flashcards. The striped backdrops uh, leftovers that I have from cutting out the frames, I will glue that uh, on the back of the Wicked card and the Ghostly card to create extra layers. Here I have the Tim Holtz creepy eyes and I will glue them down with my hot glue gun in the middle of the eye of the pupil. With the Distress Spray Stain Lumberjack Plaid I would like to create some kind of tears and watery eyes but then in a blood color. I 
I got out my alcohol ink espresso to color some of the Tim Holtz bones. I will put the alcohol ink just on my finger and I will rub it along and on top of those bones. Here is a close up of the bones. I really like the darker areas. So I got out my gathered Twix Distress Crayon and I will put it on my fingertips and rub it on the bones so I can create some darker areas. I would like to do something extra with the bones. So I got out some red thread and I'm going to wrap it around the bones and tie it off with a double knot. And this is how it will look. But first, before gluing this down, I want to work on my clusters a little bit more. And I'm adding some pieces of the book pages that I worked with before in this project. Because it is what Tim says, it's all in the details. That also goes for these little labels. I'm going to ink them up a little bit for a matching look. And I will place them on the longer strip of paper on top of the flashcards. I will also do a running stitch along the sides and a zigzag stitch in the middle. With the Halloween remnant rubs, I will decorate the labels with these two little branches. Because, yeah, like I said, it's all in the details and you want something to be there also in the back. I have cut this round piece of Halloween ephemera into two halves and I'm going to ink them up first and then place them on the sides of these clusters because you can see there is quite a lot of area from the backdrop with the stripes and I want to make it more irregular and add layers. Now that all the papers of the cluster are done, it is time to do the final detail to add it. And I will add the bones to the side of the clusters. I have finished the clusters, so now I can glue the whole piece down on our left and right flap of our smaller layer of the explosion box. And this is it. We are done. Uh, that also means that this video is coming to an end, but not before we have glued down our bottom layer of the explosion box together with the smaller layer of the explosion box. Besides that being said, I would also like to point out that this video is part of a video series on making the whole explosion box. If you want to check that out, check out my channel. Thank you for all the love and support. Have a great day. Bye.